it's hard to face an opponent who already knows the outcome. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys Page Punchers Injustice comic Dr. Fates. Powerful sorcerer Kent Nelson wears the helm of fate and sees the fate of all mankind, for better or worse. He knows the world will end, either by Brainiac's hand or in a war between Batman and Superman. Though the helm compels Kent to preserve his grim fate for the sake of order, Kent's humanity compels him to intervene on behalf of his heroic friends and risk the unforeseeable consequences. Now, before we look at Nelson and the helm of fate that he wears, I'd like to first thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of the Page Punchers Injustice comic Dr. Fate that we could have a look at in this review. Grabbing also the tape measure, as it's something I always do here in these reviews, measuring right to the very top of Dr. Fate's helmet, the figure stands exactly 7 inches in height, or the figure is 18 centimeters tall. Now that we've already looked at two Injustice figures from the folks over at McFarlane Toys, it means then we can bookend on either side of Dr. Fate. On the one side, here's Green Arrow. On the other side, here's Batman. And not only does it continue to prove that the Cape Crusader is the smallest of the three figures so far that we've looked at, we have yet to look at Supergirl. I couldn't help also notice, too, that proportionally, Batman's head seems smaller now. Maybe I didn't notice it as much in the review. I guess proportionally, his head is a little small for the rest of his body. But when you see it then with the rest of the other two figures, Dr. Fate's head seems fine, and so does Green Arrow's. Batman's head now even seems smaller in comparison. I also didn't need to have Dr. Fate's helmet to know that we've already gotten this comic now twice before and one other time again when we're going to be looking at Supergirl. So what I did end up doing, though, this is the comic that came included, I believe, with Batman. And because it's all the same comic, the one that came included with Dr. Fate's, I'm going to actually keep sealed. Not that it's necessarily going to increase in value at all, but just so that I can actually have one comic sealed away. I don't have to literally open every single one of the comics, especially when we get four of the same comic with every figure. Well, not four with every figure, but... You get one well, one figure with one comic. Flipping, though, through the pages, advertised, obviously, on the front here are the, all the four characters that make up this wave with a big giant Batman in the back. But I, though I did flip through this already now twice before, I'm just going to quickly flip through the comics so you guys can see some really good-looking artwork. I'm not going to make mention. Oh, okay, I make mention. I would really like to certainly see this Superman get released in a plastic figure. All right. Am I going to say that again when we look at Supergirl? Probably, yeah, that's going to be the case. Uh, actually, there's a couple of other characters in here. Uh, I don't know if it's a tease for future figures. But, I mean, again, like while that may not look like a normal-looking Bane, I really like the design of that one. I wonder if these are going to be sort of a tease for what we're going to be getting with future, f future figure waves. I certainly hope so. Anyways, that's the comic. I'm going to put that to the side. The one that came in clue with Dr. Fate, once again, expressing the fact that that one's sealed. I'm going to keep that one sealed for right now. The figure also comes in clue with a trading card, which happens to be the same one that we got in clue with both the Batman and the Green Arrow. I'm going to bring in just to, I don't want to eat up a lot of time to show you guys this, but these are exact same cards. The only thing that's different between them is the name that's featured down below in the, in the bottom corner. What's though different though is when you flip them around to the back, they each feature a different portrait picture, the name of the different characters, and a different read up with all the three cases. Again, when we're going to look at Supergirl, the exact same thing will apply. The figure also comes included with a display stand, a circular black display stand, Psss, the DC logo branded down below. Perfect for fitting underneath the feet of Dr. Fate and really any of the other figures we've gotten so far from the Injustice line. Uh, the figure, by the way, FYI, does have, uh, I mean, obviously I'm stating the obvious, the figure does have holes on the bombs of both of his feet, but you're only going to be able to use one of them for the display stands, stating I know the obvious. Unfortunately, though, Dr. Fate doesn't come included with any other accessories. Not that you would really consider a display stand, nor a comic, nor a card accessories, but the figure doesn't come in clue with anything else. It's sort of, in, in an interesting way, weird, because the figure, when you look at his hand, it almost looks like it's intended to be used for something. I mean, you could also use the argument, too, that he's actually pointing at something, and that the hand is not necessarily designated to hold any weapon or any accessory at, at all. Uh, one that's ra rather interesting, though, is like the Batman, he does have a closed fist. I guess Dr. Fate continues to, uh, well, I guess, guess he's all for the idea of punching people as well. But he does have a close fist on one hand, and then literally on the other hand, he sort of has, like, again, this spell casting hand. The hands, I can't help but notice, seem a little small for the rest of the figure's forearm. Uh, maybe it's just my, my eyes, but it, it does seem like his hands are maybe a little too small for the rest of his forearm. But it's a nice looking figure. Uh, this now, again, I think marks the third, possibly even fourth Dr. Fate figure that we've gotten. We got one from the Injustice. Two, I think is correct. And we also did get ourselves obviously one from uh, from Black Adam. 
I just so happen to have the one actually from Black Adam, almost as if I planned all this. I did also want to bring this one in, and while clearly it's not the case that they're using the same mold from one to the other, very much different molds from one figure, again, to the other. Even the cape is very different, too. But I did also want to bring this one in to show you the colors of the gold. The blue was also a little bit darker in the movie Dr. Fate. The helmet, obviously, in this case, does not have eyes. Dr. Fate helmet in the movie does not have eyes, whereas this one does have eyes. And the gold is also a little bit more tarnished on this newer figure, a lot brighter on the one that we got before Whoosh, fly that guy away head sculpt wise i'm actually really happy with this one uh, it's a matter of preference more so if you prefer your dr fate to have eyes or not have eyes i kind of like the look of this one the darker color that they put around the white eyes certainly helped to make the eyes stand out. If the if the sockets or the areas of the, around the helmet were smaller, I think they wouldn't do as good of a job of standing out the way that they do. The helmet sculpt is really nicely well done, nicely handled from the folks over at McFarlane Toys. The only thing I would say, though, about it is, I mean, the back of the helmet sits really low. The front of the helmet also sits really low, and when you add those two things together, it means when it comes to moving the figure back and forth, yeah, you can move the head this way, but having it move back, you're not going to be able to do much of anything. But having it move forward, you can only move it to about that much. So there are going to be some restrictions by getting a, a cool looking helmet like this. I kind of like the way that they've actually hammered out the bottom of this. It sort of looks like it was hand forged. There's a little bit of additional detailing that they sculpted in there as well. It does have sometimes the thing that goes along with gold plastic, sort of like a marbling. I don't know if you guys can actually see that if I flip this from... Actually, you can see it a lot more on this side sort of the crest that he has on the top of the helmet has a little bit more of that marbling. It doesn't bother me because it works well for the kind of helmet that Dr. Fate would have. If he had just a regular, like any character that would have had just a regular gold costume and they used gold plastic, I think it would be a little bit more jarring. But, you know, it actually adds a little bit of extra charm to Dr. Fate's helmet. The gold also is one thing I noticed with the gauntlets, the shoulders, the helmet, and also the belt area here is all sort of the same gold color. What he has, though, in front of his crest, his chest armor, I wouldn't say crest, but it's not really so much a crest, but the armor piece that he has on the front is very much a different gold than he has for the helmet and very different from the gold that he has also on the shoulder pads. The cape is also something that does have a different kind of gold, too. So you sort of have, like, I guess three different colors of gold that gets used here for the figure. The cape, once again, is a very narrow-looking cape. It does have some nice, nice natural sort of wrinkles and folds, the way the cape would drape naturally on a figure's body. Uh, the plastic is pretty soft, but it's a fairly thick plastic. So there's not a lot of give, but you can still bend the cape if you, really, if you really wanted to. The back of the figure's body, not something you normally would be able to see. I do like the blue. Like, the blue does work quite well. And even though the gold, for the most part, is a more faded-looking gold, it does still work well with the kind of blue that they chose here. I guess I did say that there were three kinds of gold. There's technically one other color gold that he has that runs sort of a strip down connecting the top to the bottom of his belt, or top of his belt. One thing, he does also have some nice detailing done to the front of his belt buckle. Kind of looks a little bit like an owl. An owl with iron wings. Ooh, there's an idea. I like the look of the belt. Uh, of course, when it comes to the paint, there's really not a lot of paint. I'm guessing all the places that are gold are likely the places that have been painted. So like the knee pads, the tops of the boots, for example, look like they probably have been painted and probably things like his, like this section and these all parts probably were painted over top of the blue plastic. But again, all, around, all in all, a nice looking figure. There are some additional details that are added in there as well. So it's not just straight, the this, this stark dark blue. There is actually some lighter colors of a blue added in there as well. Sort of panel lining the area around his thigh, panel lining the section just above his belt. So there is a little bit of extra blue. It's not just all the, well, it's not all the same blue that they used across the board. For the figure's articulation, starting again with his head. I know I already expressed the idea he's limited. Well, you can, again, still rotate the head. I mean, it's not to the point where, like, if you go to move his head, you can't do anything. You can at least move the head back and forth, so there's that. I don't know if I even pointed out the fact he does have visible ears there on the side, so he can hear everything that you guys are saying. Moving the head up is going to be a little bit more stri restricted, at least moving it back this way. Moving it down is not so much the issue, but it also looks like, one thing I noticed, is that it seems like he's got a, also a secondary ball joint I don't want to say in the neck, but when I move the head, it almost feels like maybe he's got a dumbbell ball joint. Essentially, it's a post of plastic. There's a ball joint at the top. Sorry, my finger. There's a ball joint at the bottom. Kind of like a dumbbell. So that allows what looks to be a little bit of extra wiggle space when it comes to the figure's head moving back and forth. Because his cape actually is more attached right in the middle of his torso, there's really not a lot of restrictions there, at least. But because he does have additional plastic that's been sculpted here for the shoulder pads, it means that Dr. Fate, unfortunately, can't pull off 90 degrees when it comes to bending his arms. 
Pulling off 45 is fine, but he can't pull off any more than that. This, by the way, is a softer plastic, but what they've done is they've attached it far enough up, up on the forearm that you can only really, again, get this guy at about a 45 degree angle bend. The arms, though, at least rotate all the way around. The figure does have a bicep swivel, a double hinge on the elbow, so that's good, and the hands rotate also all the way around. The upper torso, even though it looks like it's really all encased in a softer plastic, I mean, it really is, but at least he still managed to pull off a ball joint at the base or at the base of the abdomen area. It's sort of actually moving behind the belt. Legs, once again, seem to be on ratcheted joints. I think of the three figures we've looked at so far, Dr. Fate seems to have the noisiest of legs. It's like I'm actually cracking a crab leg that for a comparison but the figure does move forward uh there, he does move of course back this lower half of his body like a continuation that he has for his abdomen is more of a softer plastic but one thing i do really like about this line so far i know a lot of people call these figure diapers i don't really necessarily would say that they're figure diapers because generally like the diaper portion of the lower torsos seem to be like very visibly a bigger piece than the rest of the figure's body I mean, consistently, it looks like it's just a continuation of the lower of the abdomen right into this, the waist area, right into then his thighs. So even though this is a rubbery plastic, it doesn't actually look like, I don't know why I'm doing this with my hand, it doesn't actually look like the figure is wearing a, quote, figure diaper. Either way, though, the leg moves forward, it does move back. It's only just a mild swivel at the top of the thigh. The figure, though, still possesses a double hinge on the knee, and there's ankle articulation back and forth with toe articulation added in there as well. I mean, one other thing I could have also said about this figure, clearly for the fact that Dr. Fate is a flying character after all, is I really wish that this figure could have come included with a display stand. No harm, no foul. I mean, I obviously can just grab myself a display stand from any one of the other flight figures that I've had in my collection before. So there's not that, there's not at least a disappointing thing for me at least, because I can always use one from another figure. I could certainly see if somebody isn't collecting a lot of the DC multiverse figures, that a character like Dr. Fate, a character that is, yes, known for flight, really should have included a flight stand. I mean, obviously, because the other, the other figures really have come included with, like, if you look at Green Arrow. Green Arrow had the same comic. He had the same display stand. He had the same card as essentially Dr. Fate. But he did also have himself a quiver, the arrows that were all grouped together, and he also had himself a bow. I think with that same amount of plastic that they then used for Green Arrow, could have also then maybe used for a display stand to come include with Dr. Fate here. Here in the final looks of the Page Punchers Injustice comic, Dr. Fate, sure, yeah, I could have used myself a flight display stand. I'm, in fact, looking at one right now. You guys can't see it, but there's one right there over on my desk. The real reason why I didn't want to use it, and the one thing I tend to want to consistently do with these reviews, from start to finish, bumper to bumper, I like to present these figures as the way that they were packaged, not with the extra things I can throw in there to jazz up the review. Sure, yeah, flight stand would certainly make this guy show better on a shelf, but if the figure didn't come included with one, I feel wrong to be included it if it's not with the figure anyways. Dr. Fate probably could have used the flight stand, but either here or there, he doesn't come with any other accessories other than just the standard stand, the trading card, and the comic book. The same really that the figure figure came included with like Batman and Green Arrow. Green Arrow and Batman also, to be fair, did come included with accessories. I guess I could probably could not use that as the argument. Dr. Fate probably, if anything, maybe there was too much plastic to be used for a flight stand and also a cape, it would have been nice, if anything, that they could have thrown in a scepter or something he could have carried around in his hand. Being the fact that the figure does have one gripping hand, one closed punching fist, makes me think that the figure at one point probably could have had an accessory included with them and was maybe something that was left off when the guy was eventually packaged. But what do you guys think of Dr. Fate? Let me know down below in the comments section. I mean, again, we've looked at, what, three, four Dr. Fates here on this channel. What would you say, if you can remember them all, what would you say is your favorite Dr. Fate that we've gotten from McFarlane's team so far? This one, I think, sits pretty high on my list. I also, again, like the one that we got from Injustice. I keep wanting to think it's Injustice 2. I'm going to have to go back and even check my own videos. I also really like the one that we also got from uh, the Black Adam movie. Even though that one didn't have visible eyes, I really like the color scheme on that one. I think this one might be my favorite. And if, if I, we don't get a comic, a sort of more traditionally classic looking Dr. Fate, this is going to be the one that's going to go on my shelf with all the rest of my DC multiverse figures. Uh, what do you guys, again, think of this figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And certainly as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample of the brand new Page Punchers Injustice Dr. Fate. We can have a look at this video. Speaking of videos, if you don't mind me saying, if you certainly enjoyed the one you just finished watching, why not throw it a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing, it's certainly on board to see more. We are, by the way, if you are taking a tally, we have now looked at three of the four figures. We've looked at the Batman first, then we looked at Green Arrow. Now we 
looked at Dr. Fate, we will be looking at Super uh, Supergirl in the upcoming review. So if that's the kind of things you guys would certainly like to come back for, make sure, yeah, you're coming back because we are going to be looking at Supergirl and we are also going to be looking at more DC Multiverse reviews. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.